I still prefer the books. <laughs> yeah, okay, I probably still do. Let's pull it out, let's have a little side by side. Um, why not? That seems to be a sensible thing to do. One thing about the, the books, you've got this, um, you've got the fingerprint reader now, which after a while, it won't let you do. You have to put the pin code in every now and then, which is very sensible, I think. Let's use the keyboard case side by side as well. And incidentally, now they've made a new type of note taking app, new type of note taking note, <laughs> a new note type, which is a type note. That's the silly thing to say, isn't it? I asked, please, can I have a word processor? And that's what we've got. And it's even got styles. It's got, you know, it's got all the different things that you might expect. It's not quite up to the Microsoft Word sort of level of functionality, but um, it is good. Now, you have essentially a word processor now, and here's where I absolutely love this, because if I start typing, then I can bring up this, the books keyboard, and now I can use voice recognition and the voice recognition is generally pretty accurate. And that's something that Remarkable 2 is not going to be able to do. Is it going to be something that potentially Remarkable 3 might do? And this is one thing I think they might be considering is now they've got this folio case here, which is called the Remarkable Type Folio. It's not called the Remarkable 2 Type Folio. So it could be a window for them actually to make another device which would fit into this and maybe it could have some extra features like a front light, like a microphone to allow them to do this and more processing power that you would need to be able to do this, which the Tab Ultra can do just seamlessly. So let's have a little look how well it did with that. And of course, now you've got the type to be able to go and make those changes. More remarkable, it's gone for two as in T00. Is it going to be something that potentially Remarkable 3 might do? And this is one thing that I think they might be considering is now they've got this folio case here, which is called the Remarkable Type Folio. It's not called the Remarkable 2 Type Folio. Um, they've got a photo there. You see how it's just, it's just more natural to be able to use the keyboard to make those edits than it is to try and make it with stylus or the on-screen keyboard. It's just a more natural thing. So it could be a window for them to actually to, to make another device which would fit into this. And maybe you could have some extra features like a front light, like a microphone to allow it to do this. And more processing power that you would need to be able to do this, which the type, which the tab ultra can do just seamlessly. So let's have a little look at how well it did with that. Well, it did pretty well, didn't it? So there's like three edits I made in there. So that's pretty darn good. If I bring the microphone really close to this, do, do you want to hear that? If I bring the microphone really close to this, then I can type away a little bit more on this and see how it goes. And I'll maybe put them side by side and just do a little bit of that. So here is the Tab Ultra on this side and the new Use that on the right. Really, really quite a similar feel, I would say. Yeah, nothing in that for me. Uh, maybe. I think the Ultra has got a slightly deeper travel. Maybe the Remarkable feels a little bit more click, a little bit more um, finely tooled, but I'm not all that convinced about that statement either. I think maybe. Yeah, I think maybe I prefer the Ultra just. I'm interested to see are they actually any difference in size? They're pretty much the same size keyboard. And you can see that the, the one thing about the Ultra is that they've had to decide to make that the keyboard is actually slightly larger. The keyboard case is slightly larger than the device itself. You can just see that here. 
to allow them to fit in those kind of full size keys. They are almost identical in size, in fact. So there you are. Uh, I don't think you need to make the decision on device in terms of how their keyboard feels. That would be my thoughts there. So that was good, right? That was, was that useful? Hopefully that was, give it a thumbs up, you know, all the good stuff and like and share all of those things. Does the leather feel expensive? Yeah, I think it's all fake leather, it's all sort of vegan leather. Um, it does have a nice premium feel to it, the whole, the whole thing. It does, like everything that Remark will do, does have a nice feel to it, that is really nice, okay. Yeah, hopefully that was good for comparison to the Tab Ultra's keyboard case. Obviously you've seen the way that the Remarkable works, the Tab Ultra, when you've got it unfolded in the keyboard case, you've got all the keys on the back, so you're holding it and you, you it kind of hand is on the keyboard, the keys all the time. So it's a bit of a weird feeling, but it's, you know, most keyboard cases work like that. Remarkable is the first one to actually work like this. Whether they might, might be, this is the, the, the norm going forwards. It might be that this is actually the way now to do keyboard cases. Remarkable might have actually made a bit like Apple do a design innovation that everyone will copy in the near future. But there's reasons to buy all of those three major ones. Absolutely, that's why the choice is so difficult. Uh, Tab Ultra is good for drawing practice, but you don't want to draw with it in the keyboard case because the magnets sometimes put you off. The I, I did a comparison recently. Yeah, thank you, Alan. You <laughs> said this for me. Uh, between the Tab Ultra Remarkable 2 and Kindle Scribe for drawing, just rewatched it today. Oh, how great. That's fabulous to hear. It'd be interesting to know if there's any magnets in this that actually put off the drawing, uh, drawing lines uh, on this keyboard case wouldn't it let's have a little look it's in its keyboard case i wonder if it actually gives you any funny lines maybe yeah yeah there is yeah these bits here look i'm pretty sure it might just be jitter yeah can you see that That's definitely going around a magnet, isn't it? And that is where the thing is is snapping to that. Yeah, I don't think that's avoidable then in terms of a keyboard case. Ink tablet, the way the Wacom Myanmar screen works with magnets, it's electromagnetic res resonance. There is no, I think, way to avoid having some of that, which if I take it out of its case, won't be an issue. And hasn't been an issue in its normal case for me before. Yeah, see straight. Oh no. There's a slight wobble there. Hmm, maybe a bit more deeper testing for drawing is coming soon. Yeah, I will make it as quick as I can. <laughs> the Lamy is awesome, absolutely Alan says. Thank you very much. Solid. But I, I wouldn't say that there's something that I really um, don't like. Do you mean wobble with the pen maybe, Bixis? Or do you mean wobble literally on the table? Yeah, there is more of that. But I have a very unrepresentative table because my table is reclaimed wood. My, my uh, desk is reclaimed wood. So things do wobble more on here. But I would say you are correct in yeah, that it is a more stable platform. The Remarkable, because it does have that, that flat back now, which is really, really cool. That is a really clever way, you know, that hats off to them again for their design. That is a clever design of how to hide a keyboard case. So it looks really cool. Could I try to lap the, yeah, so work for it. I'll try it now, but you won't be able to see it, but uh, like. <laughs> it's definitely doable. It's, I mean, you're gonna, you have to have your, your, your legs a bit too close together is what I would say. So you might just be, you might find it just a little bit uncomfortable to have your legs just a bit more close together than, than maybe you really want to keep it stable. They're also, the other thing about being comfortable on it for, for typing for any long periods of time is um, don't try and put your hands together like this, you'll get sort of carpal tunnel in your wrists. But try and just, just accept that your hands aren't gonna be perfectly lying across the home key. Uh, let them spread a little bit and try and just type I like it. And there is something that, yeah, when I, when I gave the news of this and 
I have a, a colleague who, who uses a Remarkable 2 and I showed her a picture of this keyboard case thinking, wow, she'll be excited to hear this news. No, she said straight away, so, but I like that the Remarkable 2 is not that. And there's a very different thing having it in this, in, in a meeting on a table, in this format, uh, it looks like a notebook. And you're working with somebody and you're just writing some, something down, you look up from it like this. But whereas people, you know, it's a very different thing. It's not flat on the table. It's not facing them. They can't see what's on the screen. It's a very different. It's a very different vibe that you give off by having a screen in between you and a person. So I'd just be aware of using it like that. I, I do think the way to use this, and I think the way they're intending it is to actually go ahead and um, use the, the handwriting recognition. I think that's the way they intend you using this, use the handwriting recognition, and then use the keyboard case to make those edits. And I think that's the right, that's the right way. So that's what I'm gonna lean towards using it when I daily drive this to give you a full review. What would I do? Yeah, that will be the answer. That will be what I will answer in my comparison video that I will make, whether to go for the premium. I mean, there is very little difference, although I did notice that there was a difference in terms of the pencil tool. I found it quite difficult to use the books yeah, I'm definitely, you are definitely able to get finer. You do have more control. I think it's just about calibration, really. The pressure is better calibrated with the official remarkable pens and their nibs than it is with a different third party stylus. So if you're interested in drawing, I would go with the remarkable stylus itself, whether you need to fork out for the premium one, the marker plus is another question because I'm not wholly convinced about having the eraser on the back because you can just tap the eraser there you know move backwards and forwards like this so you can just use your left hand to tap the eraser if you are drawing and actually in a way that's less intrusive because you're not having to twist the whole pen around like this some people just like doing that though don't they i don't think you necessarily need to go with the marker plus for drawing because what you would do if you were an artist, in any case, you'd probably draw with a pencil and then you would have an eraser probably in your hand as well, like a small, small eraser, rather than, because eraser on the backs of, backs of pencils just wear out really quickly. It's just a convenient place to have them, whereas it's always there on screen anyway to access with your non-drawing hand. 